nobody can excel in life constantly, correctly to the end of their life without operating on that work of their hopeful nervous. Service to God is the advantage for the disadvantage. we want to thank you again for gathering us together. Thank you for your mercy and your faithfulness that has kept us going. Lord, we ask that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit be made manifest even in this season in the name of Jesus. Speak your word to your children. Let your word come with light. Let it come with insight and let there be a transformation for your glory. I present myself to you that you will pour your grace upon my lips and through this ministration we will all be blessed and Jesus will be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. The Lord bless us. Thank you, leaders. Thank you for the good work you're doing. To the glory of God, we have a topic this morning. I want to appreciate our pastor for the privilege. Thank you, our drummers and instrumentalists. The Lord, we honor you. Thank you, Dickness Biodu, always standing in. Today, the topic says a shift. Somebody say shift from slavery to sonship. Amen. There's going to be a shift this morning. And I bless God for that prayer point. John chapter 1 verse 12. That was a rhema. I want to start with a story quickly. There's a story of a man. Very, very rich man. We are running on time. This man has a servant and he has a son. Some way, the servant has been in the house for like forever. And the son came and met the servant in the house. And while the man was about to die, are we together, teenagers? While the servant was about to die, I mean the master was about to die, he asked the son, he said, son, he was writing something we call the will. He said, son, uh, I want you to pick just one thing from all of my riches and wealth. And after you've picked that one thing, the servant has the right to pick the other things. And the son, who is young and growing and trying to be mature in age, was a little bit confused. Why would my rich dad ask me to pick just one thing out of the many, many things he has? Guys, what will you pick? What? Who said that? Who said that? Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, the, Lord, the young boy sat and thought, and one of the strategy he used was that he went to the elders to say, elders, I need wisdom. As teenagers, as young adults, we need what? Wisdom. And often time we feel we know it all. But it's paramount to dwell from the wealth and the wisdom of those that have gone ahead of you. This poor boy went to the elders. I believe he went to Elder Benga or Brog Benga. And Elder Benga said, my son, pick the servants. While he was going through all those confusion and troubles, the servant was flaunting the old house, saying, yes. They acknowledge me. They recognize me. They know I'm in charge. And guess what? He picked the servants. And if you pick the servants, you pick, you pick the wealth. You pick the servant because the servant as a son is under your lordship. And I'm here to let you know this morning that you are not a servant. You are not a slave. You are a child of God. You are a son of God. You are a child of God. And that is why the scripture today is in the book of Luke 11 from verse, uh, Luke 15 from 11 to 32. The story of the prodigal son. We have no slave mentality. We have what we call the sonship mentality. Tell yourself and say, I have a sonship mentality. And I will operate in that sonship mentality. The servant understands the scripture in John 16 verse 15. That says all that the father has is what? Is mine. Tell yourself all that the father has is mine. I'm not hearing you. I'm not feeling you. All that the father has is mine. When we have a sonship mentality, it makes us to limit ourselves. And not just ourselves, it limits our God. It makes us see ourselves less than who God sees us. It makes us operate like the Israelites when they say, go and see. What did you see? They acted and said, they are like grasshoppers. That is the way they see themselves. A, a slavery mentality. 
in that scripture from that story in Luke chapter 11, I mean 15, verse 11 to 32, we're going to read it quickly. The Bible made us understand that a certain man had two sons. We're going to see the characteristics of a slavery mentality. He had two sons. And in verse 12, if media can help me, Luke 15, verse 12, the young guy, he said, Father, can I have a portion of the good that failed to me? I want my own portion of my good. It was not his time to get that good. It was not his right. It was not time. But the slavery mentality in him is always doing what? Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Why the sonship mentality is always saying, Lord, make me, mold me, build me, patience me, grow me. What do I do for you? Are we getting it? A slavery mentality wants the inheritance that is not due to him. Verse 12 of that scripture. The prodigal son. A story was told again of Pastor Adeboye. Pastor Adeboye said there was, he was looking for a house girl. So for those that are in America, there's something we call house help. They are like, not, I don't want to call them slave, but like they like help us, slave. And then some of them have this mentality. And the family of this house girl that they brought for Adeboye brought a six-year-old girl. Guy, that is child abuse. They brought a six-year-old girl for an house help. And the, the other said, no, I cannot take a six-year-old girl. That is child abuse. And they said, the, the wife said, okay, let's send her back. The other boy said, no, we cannot send her back. If we send her back, the give me mentality of that family, we make them do what? We make them take her to another place. And because they say, give me mentality. And the other boy said, no, I would rather pour into this girl. And today, this girl is a graduate and she's doing well. A slavery mentality is a give me mentality. Number two, a slavery mentality is self-centered and selfish. That young guy, it was not due for his inheritance. Give me, father. Give me, give me, give me. It is the child's mentality. It's the victim's mentality. While a son's, son's manifestation of sons are selfless, they are convinced that all things are mine. You know in the scripture there's something that says all things are yours. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21b says, all things are yours. Wait for your time. Do not run above your time. Number three, because of time, a slavery mentality always walks away from the source. Verse 13 of that scripture, prodigal son. The, they always walk away from the source. And not many days after, the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. He's like, I'm tired of staying at home. Many of our young adults, I want to go and have my own life. I got my apartment. I can drive. I, I'm in college. I got it together. They always leave the source. But sons, the Bible says they stay in the source. They stay with the source. Tell yourself, I will not leave the source. And by the way, who is the source? The father. The father is the source. John 8, 35, New Living Translation said, a slave is not a permanent member of the family, but the son is a part of the family forever. The slave leaves the source. The son stays with the source. Whenever you plug yourself out of the source, you plug yourself for destruction. May you not plug yourself out of the source in the name of Jesus. That guy took a decision that was outside the influence of his father. His first decision in life. And that first decision, I want to go, brought disaster upon his life. Every slave mentality, the Lord will uproot today in the name of Jesus. A slavery mentality has a waste mentality. Let's go back to Luke, Luke 15. A slavery mentality has a waste mentality. They waste their time, they waste their resources, they waste everything that the, the, the master has. Because they do not see it as their own. But the son keeps and preserves. The Bible says a good father leaves inheritance to his children's children. They preserve. The son preserves resources. They do not waste resources. Are we getting it? Luke chapter 15 verse 13. You can see it. And not many days the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And when he has spent all, they do not save. They are wasters. He has spent all. Then he had what? Nothing. It's inheritance. Look at how valuable his inheritance means to him, Jemima. He could not even preserve any. He spent all. He got that friend. He, ride, he was with, living with bad guys, partying around. That is a slave mentality. A slave mentality or even allowing others to waste him. Because the Bible says, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. He went around, spent all that he had. 
and he wasted, he wasted his substance with riotous living. Number five, a slave mentality always focused on serving others for living. When he was done wasting all, in verse 14, verse 15, the Bible says he joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields. He was done. He, was, he, had, he had nothing. So he went to the citizen and he said, please, hire me, hire me. They always want to serve people. That is slave mentality. They do not see the capacity and all the grace that is loaded in them to make things happen. They do not have an ownership spirit. As you grow, I release upon you the ownership grace in the name of Jesus. The grace to possess, the grace to take charge, the grace to take over, the grace not to say, just hire me for a penny. A slavery mentality. Are we together? And he went and joined himself and said, just hire me. A old son of a rich man that had inheritance, gave his inheritance, traded his inheritance, and looking for a penny to survive. And he will, fight, he will faint and fill his belly, verse 15, with the ox. And then the, the food of the pigs that he's taking care of, he used the, the, the remnant to eat, the money or whatever. He used it to eat and feed himself. A slave mentality. Depending on others. Slave mentality have so much low esteem that all they do is to depend on others. How is your self-esteem this morning? Are you, a, are you having a slave mentality or a sonship mentality? And then when you now look at the other son, you know he had two sons. The other sons from verse 29 to 31. The Bible says when he heard that the son was brought back home. Because he finally came back home. Let's look at that little guy's story for a second. The Bible says the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came and begged him in verse 29. But he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing that you told me to do. Look at his response, the big brother. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friend. Verse 30. Yet, when this son of yours come back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate him by killing the fattened calf. Verse 28. What do you think of that old guy? How many people are, are dead and lost and slaves here? Is it just the young guy? Or do you think this guy too is included? From his response. How many of you think he's also a slave from his response? Or oh, just a few people? Okay. Well, from my conclusion, he's also a slave. Look at his response. His response was filled with arrogance. Number one, he talked like a slave. He thinks like a slave. He sees his father's training. You know, some of the time we see our, the discipline that God gives us, even as, his, as, as if God is punishing us. He sees it as a slave. As if, God is, as if his father is punishing him. So to me, he was close to the father, but he was far from the father. Hello? He was the older brother, he was in the house, but his mentality is like that of a slave. When you are a son, you take charge as a son. Number one is that he was in bitterness. He was angry. This is his younger brother that was lost but found, dead but alive, back in the house. You should embrace that he came back after, go, after being gone for a long time. Are we together? But this guy was, number one, angry. A slavery mentality. A slavery mentality is a slave to bitterness. And what they do is that they build anger. They build resentment. They build pride. They, breed, they build ingratitude. Forgetting that the Bible says you have not received the spirit of bondage, even to fear and to have all these categories of troubles or stuffs, anger, bitterness, jealousy, envy, because that was what he exhibited. But that God has given us the spirit of adoption. But this big guy, this big brother, that should be a big brother, from his response, for me, he was talking like a slave. He has already graded himself. He was self-righteous. He already is demanding his place, saying, give me, give me, give me my own portion. You are not considering me. And I hope that is not who we are in the house this morning. And finally, a slave mentality could be attached, just like the big brother. He was attached to the source, but disconnected from the source. He was attached to the father, but disconnected from the father. He had an access to the father, but he was not connected. He was a son, but he was not in charge. So, in conclusion, both of them were slaves. 
Both of them operated with a slavery mentality. But thank God for the, for the prodigal son. The Bible said he did something. He did three things that commanded a shift. Don't forget we are talking about a shift from slavery mentality to sonship. In this country, you need to have that shift to become the accepted ones. In this country, you need to have that shift to become the acknowledged one. In your schools, in your colleges, and everywhere you go, there must be a shift of mentality. And that mentality we are asking God for is a sonship mentality. Those that have received him from the prayer we pray, the Lord has given them the what? I love the word, the rights. Come on, tell yourself, I have a right. I have a right because I carry the spirit of sonship. Say it like you mean it. I have a right because I carry upon me the spirit of sonship. There's a shift that takes a man from where he is, that takes a teenage or young adult from where he is to where God has destined you to be. And that is what we are talking about this morning. This guy in verse 17, he looked at himself, he said, Ah, a old me. Look at what I'm doing. Taking care of pigs. I've lost my inheritance. I've lost it all. I don't know what you have lost this morning. But God is saying there's going to be a shift. I say God is saying there's going to be a shift. In verse 17, the Bible says he came to his senses. Verse 17. He said, he was doing what we call self-talk. Self-talk. He came back to his senses. He said, ah, God, he owed me. Like you see some young girls, they go out and they stay with boyfriends, live with boyfriends. And after things have gone wrong, they come to themselves and say, ah, I have father and mother in the house. So God, what is wrong with my life? He came to himself and said, Lord, how many higher servants of my father have bread enough? Even my father's servants are okay. How much more me? Me. Look at what I'm doing. And then he, he came to what we call self-acknowledgement. It is self-talk and then self-acknowledgement because he reflected. And one of the things that pushed him to reflection was that he was hungry. There was nothing else in his stomach. He was so hungry. He said, okay, oh, now that I have acknowledged this, I will do what? Verse 18. I will arise. I will arise. Somebody is arising this morning. I say somebody is arising this morning because you carry something. Tell yourself I carry something. I will arise this morning and I will go back to my father. Your father is God. Your father is seated on, in heaven. He's waiting with his hand open saying when will my daughter, when will my son come back home? He said I will arise and go back to my father because he acknowledged I have seen against heaven and before my God. There must be a shift of that mentality before restoration to your divine ordained position must happen. Many people are Christians, but not all people are enjoying the rights of sonship. But I will enjoy the rights of sonship. There was a self-talk. There was a self-acknowledgement and there was a self-determination. He was humble, he was broken, he was contrite in art. He said, the things that I do that does not bring glory to God, I am going back to position myself aright. But one thing that happened that was so sad is that when he got back home, let's, let's not be distracted. When he got back home, verse 22, his father was sitting there. Verse 20, he came to him and he was, he was, he, he had a compassion on him. And his father was sitting and waiting for his embrace. His father was waiting for his lordship. But one bad thing that happened is that he came back home, but he lost something. What did he lose, guys? What has he lost? His inheritance. He took it earlier. He took it when he was not due for it. He came back home. But does he still have the inheritance? No. He had to work for that inheritance. He had to do extra mile, extra work to regain back that inheritance. He returned home empty. He will not return empty in the name of Jesus. He took that which, is be, which belonged to him before time and he came back home empty. And he had to work hard for it again. Oftentimes, there are bruises 
when we miss our steps. Hello? When you fall, there's what? There's bruises. In the journey of life, some people fall. And when they fall, they have bruises. The bruises is still there after the mess. But the good thing is that you are always safe when you are in the inside. God is calling us back to stay with the source, to stay with the Father. Even with your bruise, with your pain, come back home. Tell yourself, I'm coming back home. I'm coming back home. I'm coming back to the Father. I'm staying with the Father. And I'm remaining with the Father. When the Father saw him, the Father gave him four things. He gave him his robe, a best robe. He said, he has, he has not taken shower. I don't care about the bruise. But I'm just going to cover him with a robe. The Father says, this is your identity. That's, that's what the robe signifies. Take it back. The Father gave him a shoe, a sandals. The sandals represented direction and light. Take back your light. You lost it before. Take it back. The Father gave him a ring. The ring signifies his authority. Take back your authority. It is yours. Take it back. And the Father threw a party and said, this party is to announce you that you are my son. The Lord is about to do that for us this morning. Can we lift up our voices as we rise up to pray finally and say, Father, I return to my source this morning. Every area we have failed you, in any way I have disappointed you, I come back to you as my father. I take back my identity. I am a child of God. I take back my authority. I take back direction from you. I take back my identity. I take back my authority. Cry to him and say, Father, I am your son. Accept me back, O oh Lord. I will stay with the source. I will not be disconnected from the source. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If somebody has taken back the identity, shout hallelujah. You took back your authority, shout hallelujah. You took back direction and life, shout hallelujah. If you have not given your life to Jesus, make up your mind today. There is no safer place than in the presence of the Father. The Lord bless us all in Jesus.